We are all different. That's why I had to leave you by yourself last night. Although I knew it was mortally dangerous, you had to test yourself against those entities. They became dangerous to you not because they are naturally malevolent, but because you were not impeccable. There is something in you that is very chintzy. You are just humoring me. You have been humoring everybody all along, and of course, that places you automatically above everyone and everything. But you know yourself that cannot be so. You are only a man, and your life is too brief to encompass all the wonders and all the horrors of this marvelous world. Therefore, your humoring is chintzy. It cuts you down to a crappy size. I think I have a cure for it. Even you would agree with me if you could remember what you did last night. You ran as fast as any sorcerer, only when your opponent became unbearable. We both know that, and I believe I have already found a worthy opponent for you. What kind of opponent are you going to find for me? Only our fellow men are worthy opponents. Other entities have no volition of their own, and one must go to meet them and lure them out. Our fellow men, on the contrary, are relentless. We have talked long enough. Before we leave, you must do one more thing, the most important of all. I am going to tell you something right now to set your mind at ease of why you are here. The reason you keep coming to see me is very simple. Every time you have seen me, your body has learned certain things, even against your desire. And finally, your body now needs to come back to me to learn more. Let's say that your body knows it's going to die, even though you never think about it. So I've been telling your body that I too am going to die. And before I do, I would like to show your body certain things. Things which you cannot give to your body yourself. For example, your body needs fright. It likes it. Your body needs the darkness and the wind. Your body now knows the gate of power and can't wait to try it. Your body needs personal power and can't wait to have it. So let's just say then that your body returns to see me because I'm its friend. I've told you that the secret of a strong body is not in what you do to it, but in what you don't do. Now it is time for you not to do what you always do. Sit here until we leave and not do. He put his hands over my notes and took them away from me. He carefully closed the pages of my notebook, secured it with a rubber band, and then threw it like a disc far into the chaparral. I was shocked and began to protest, but he put his hand over my mouth. He pointed to a large bush and told me to fix my attention not on the leaves, but on the shadows of the leaves. He said that running in the darkness did not have to be spurred by fear, but could be a very natural reaction of a jubilant body that knew how to not do. He repeated over and over in a whisper in my right ear that to not do what I knew how to do was the key to power. In the case of looking at a tree, what I knew how to do was to focus immediately on the leaves. The shadows of the leaves or the spaces in between the leaves were never my concern. He told me to start focusing on the shadows of the leaves on one single branch and then eventually work my way to the whole tree and not let my eyes go back to the leaves because the first deliberate step to storing power was to allow the body to not do. Perhaps it was because of my fatigue or my nervous excitation, but I became so immersed in the shadows of the leaves that by the time Don Juan stood up, I could group the dark masses of shadows as effectively as I normally group the foliage. The total effect was startling. I told Don Juan that I would like to stay longer. He laughed and patted me on the head. I've told you, the body likes things like this. He then said I should let my stored power guide me through the bushes to my notebook. He gently pushed me into the chaparral. I walked aimlessly for a moment and then I came upon it. I thought that I must have unconsciously memorized the direction in which Don Juan had thrown it. He explained the event, saying that I went directly to the notebook because my body had been soaked for hours in not doing.